Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Creekmore, and I am a licensed professional counselor, as well as a professional school counselor for grades four and five in a local elementary school here in Georgia. I'm sitting here with my amazingly gorgeous wife. Oh, thank you. So I, again, I'm the wife of bearded.school.counselor. Um, and I, my name is Nita Creekmore, and I'm an instructional coach. Um, we're just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and so I have been teaching. I taught for 13 years, and then now I'm an instructional coach for elementary school. So we are here to talk to you all about self-care, um, but our title is a little different, and there's reason behind that. Um, what is our reason behind that? The main reason is because self-care over, I'd say, the past decade has been somewhat of a, of a fad, as I like to use air quotes, mm -hmm. um, mainly because it seems like that's just a new thing, right? Everyone is doing something, self-care this, self-care that. And we really want to impress upon you guys today the importance of developing a sustainable, effective self-care plan that can carry you through the course of this unprecedented school year. So we want to start by Definitely thanking the wonderful people over at Pear Deck for even inviting yes. us to be a part of the Pear Fair. Yes. So thank you, Team Pear Deck. Yes, thank you so much. Long. And we're super excited. We're super, super excited to be a part of Pear Fair. Um, but so, yeah, our title is Self-Care More Than a Cliche. We definitely want to give you some tips and um, strategies to create your self-care plan and um, just dig deeper into what self-care is and to what it means to you. Okay, so we're gonna start. Gonna jump um, right on in. Yep, so just jump right on in. We're gonna make ourselves a little bit smaller. Here we go. So let's be honest, the struggle is so real right now. It is. And it's real for a multitude of reasons. Of course, we know COVID-19, like we're kind of like in the midst of a global pandemic here. Just a little. So let's just kind of sit in that for a moment. Let the gravity of that weigh on you for just a moment. Yeah. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Um, For me, I struggle with anxiety. And so a lot of times... I um, can let that take over. And so right now I feel good. Um, but a lot of times when a lot a lot comes up at work or whatever, I start feeling just a little anxious um, with what's going on professionally. And so, um, and we'll talk about the pillars in a minute, but um, that's how I'm feeling right now. How about you? I feel like to say the word, it's been a lot. I feel like that's an understatement. I feel like it's been overwhelming at times. Mm -hmm. The going back and forth of, do we go face to face? Do we not go face to face? How effective can I be as a school counselor if I can hardly see my students? Mm -hmm. um, the same way that teachers feel, how can I be effective if I can't see my students or they can't see their students mm -hmm. and everything's virtual? Yeah. So it's been very overwhelming at times. Mm -hmm. um, but Right now, I felt like, or I have been feeling like the self-care plan um, that's in place has been guiding me and pushing me through this tough time. That's important. Um, so if you have a pen and paper um, or if you are, you know, viewing this um, through Pear Deck, just type in um, the area that has the type for you to write um, how you're feeling right now. Just we want to check in with you. Um, and this is definitely an important activity to do for yourself, but also with your students um, to just do a check in to see how they're doing as well. Um, but right now, just write how you're feeling right now. And we'll give you a little time to do that. Feel free to pause the video and just um, write down how you're feeling right now. I kind of would like improvise and do the, you know, the Jeopardy music right now, but we don't own the rights to that song. We don't. So we need to. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to move right here in the middle. So we're going to go right into our target areas. So our target areas for our um, presentation today is one, why self-care? Okay. Two, pillars of well-being. We'll talk about that. And then the last thing we're going to talk to you guys about is just creating your self-care recipe for home and at work because it's super important to have one for both of those places. Right. And 
they can somewhat overlap, but you definitely want to have two separate ones. And you can have some of the same things on both, but still two separate pages. Exactly. It's, it's, it's important. Okay. All right. So you go ahead and do this. So why self-care? 2020 versus 2021? I don't know about you guys, but so far it's um, seemed like a to be continued. So they're meshing into each other. <laughs> it's like one long, endless year, right? I don't know about you, but when 2021 happened, I thought... That it mag everything magically was going to go back to normal, right? I mean, I did. <laughs> the, the COVID was going to be gone. I Rona was hoping. Was no, Rona was no longer going to be around the corner at the school in the school building. Just so it was saying. just going to be gone, right? I'm just saying. Well, no, it didn't happen like that. Um, yeah. But regardless of what year it is, mm -hmm. self-care should remain no matter what's going on. It should no matter be. what time of year, no matter exactly. what year it is your self-care plan should remain a constant. It should. And you should always have a self-care plan. And we'll talk about that again more later. But a self-care plan that you always check in with, you always revise. And so self-care should remain no matter what year it is. And that is fact. Yes. That is fact. Big fact. Big facts. Okay, there are distinct differences between continuously recharging for survival and authentically recovering for self-care. I think when we went into the pandemic in March that we were surviving. Yes. Right. And we were just trying to survive. And I think there's ebbs and flows to that. But yes, we were literally building the plane in midair is yeah, what we were doing. Exactly. It was crisis learning. It was. It was crisis learning. Um, and we've had time. And this is this is what I struggle with. And I'll just keep it all the way real with y'all. I struggle with the fact that um, districts have had time to get it right. I really feel like we've had time to get it right. And so that's the struggle. And I'm not saying, of course, we, the vaccine wasn't ready, but I'm just saying just our, our plan of action. A comprehensive plan laid out for an yeah. either or type of situation. And, and hoping the virus is not here is not a plan, you know? So, right. um, so anyway, outside of that, we can't control that, but um Right now, we need to make sure we're authentically recovering for self-care, like being authentic in our self-care and making sure that we're doing what we do because it's personal, what we need to do for ourselves. Um, so which one are you doing right now? Are you recharging for survival or are you authentically recovering for self-care? You know, write that down or think about it. Take a moment to reflect on that. Which one are you doing right now? And just a little help with that answer if you are waiting until you're almost burnt out to do something for yourself yeah you are recharging for survival mm -hmm. just you know let's give a little help with that answer that's, there. A, that's a really good a really good tip on that that's definitely really good so we're gonna make ourselves a little bit more smaller for this So there are pillars of well-being. There are. There are six pillars of well-being. Um, the first one is psychological. And those are the things that we think and how we process those things, right? So it's like the thoughts that we have and how we actually process those thoughts, including all positive and negative thoughts that can influence our very own behaviors. Um, number two is emotional. The feelings that we experience in our response to our thoughts, situations, or behavior. So that's the second pillar is emotional. A third pillar is spiritual, a connection or belonging to a higher purpose, not to be confused with religion, which is a set of practices or beliefs. Right. We didn't want to um, you to get confused with that. Um, number four, physical, our bodies and how it functions. Number five, personal, our interactions and relationships with others including family, friends, as well as coworkers. And then our last one, number six, is professional. Our level of satisfaction and compatibility with our work. Okay. And you can see the star where we got the six pillars from. And we're just going to expound on the six pillars because the six pillars of well-being, you know, after me and Mike were really discussing and really digging deep into the six pillars, we were we had like an aha moment. Like, yes. it's not just... We have to be more intentional about our self-care. It's not just like you said, you know, bath, bath, 
um, bubble baths and massages, which uh, are manicures. great yeah. and can help with your self-care. And self -care. that could be an ingredient in your self-care recipe. It definitely can. But the, these six pillars hit on all of the areas of your life um, in which you really need to dive into self-care in all six of those areas. Okay, so we're going to um, just expound on that. Okay, let me get a little bigger. All right. So when we're thinking psychological, we're thinking about cognitive restructuring, right? Because we often have bad thoughts in our head. We have we live we live within a 24 hour news cycle. Mm -hmm. So there is always something bad going on in the world somewhere. Right. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, exactly. 365 days out of the year, 366 on the leap year. But the fact of the matter is, if we're constantly feeding ourselves all these negative storylines that are going on, it starts to become a self-perpetuating thing in our mind. We start thinking negatively. We start thinking about the worst. We yes. see that the COVID numbers are rising, death tolls are rising. We mm -hmm. start saying, oh my gosh, and I've got to go back into the school building. Now, we're not saying that your negative thoughts are bad. We're not saying that at all. But what we're saying is we have to try to do something to restructure that thought pattern, that thought process. And, and thinking about what it does to your body when it happens. So like, pushing out those negative thoughts, you have to push them out of your mind and, and allow for space for positive ones. Yes. Right. So like your <clears throat> mind automatically is a, is like a realist. Like your mind is a realist. Sometimes your mind can be a pessimist. Yes. And so like you, your automatic thoughts are, you know, um, I can't do this or I'm frustrated or, and those are valid feelings. Those are right. valid, valid feelings, right. but we have to replace or add on to those thoughts as well with positive anxiety releasing thoughts. We have to do that. And I, you know, I practice some of these things for myself because um, my first thought is not always, it's more realist and, you know, you know, negative or thinking about all the things that could go wrong first yes. before the positivity comes in. So we have to train our brains to think positive, think of those positive thoughts to enter our mind. Now, some of the strategies, some of the strategies that we have here are some of the mantras, strategies, mantras. I, or mantras, mantras, whichever mantras. way you say it, yeah. tomato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> so like um, your mantras or mantras um, are really, really helpful. Um, and, a, and a mantra or mantra is more like just a word or a set of words like, you know, love or I feel love right. or um Another one would be joy, you know, just like a one word yeah. thing or perseverance or perseverance. Yeah. And you're like kind of saying that to yourself. I think of a mantra kind of like your if you choose a word of the year, like if you choose this is my word of the year, like, for instance, my word is um, presence for the year. Right. So that's more like a mantra for me and how I'm going to be present. Um, and affirmation is. <clears throat> which is a good app, which we don't have stake in this app at, at all. No, but we don't. It's the but I we're am. Gonna, we're going to plug it right here right now play the i am app the i am app i'm telling you that is so legit it is it's a legit it app is. so like you tell the app uh, how many times a day you want to get an affirmation you choose what areas in which you want to get an affirmation for and then like mine is self-care um and then another one would be um maybe just like um anxiety, anxiety. is another one yeah. um depression so depression is another one and so you get affirmations throughout your day it can pop up on your phone if you have a smartwatch, it'll pop up on your swap yes. smartwatch. so it's really really a good one um i tell the story earlier um <clears throat> and i said like one of my good friends at work she was like i told her about the i am app and like we're literally having a conversation and it pop and it pops up on her phone and she's like this is exactly what i need like right now yeah. right now um, so affirmations really do help to build that positivity in your mind um, and give you the strength that you need to keep going. Yes. And then we also have another strategy would be mindfulness. Yeah, mindfulness. And when we think of mindful, mindfulness, we all always think about like, oh, you have to be mindful of it. Being mindfulness is actually a process. Mm -hmm. It's not just something we simply do. Sitting in our feelings, being able to identify what those feelings are, how we're actually feeling at that time, particularly right now, in the moment, mindful, right in the moment. 
So mindfulness is another one that's extremely important. Mindful goes along with being present, definitely. Yes. Being present. Um, journaling, therapy is another um, really important one. In therapy, you're going to see repeated throughout um, most of the different pillars um, and self-reflection. Yes. And when we say therapy, we oftentimes there's such a negative connotation with therapy. And I've always said, not just because I'm a licensed professional counselor, but I've always felt like, there is no other time in your life where you can go speak to someone who is going to listen to you without judgment or bias than the times that you spend talking to a therapist. And oftentimes, once we get those things off our chest, we feel so much lighter and freer after we've completed a therapy session. So don't knock it until you try it. Yes, I love I love it. It's the best. Okay, the next pillar we're going to be talking about is emotional. So um, the feelings we experience um, in response to those thoughts that we have, situations, and um, behaviors. So take time to identify, experience, and process those feelings. Earlier we said it was checking in and we're going to talk to you about sitting in your feelings. That's what we mean about emotional and taking time to do that. And a lot of times we make decisions based on our emotional feelings. We haven't taken time to sit in those feelings. Yes, like right. don't try to like make any type of rational, dis- any type of serious decision when you're angry. Yeah, when say you're when sad, you're sad. Yeah, um, when you are anxious, you know. Right. But take time to just sit in those feelings that you're feeling. Um, it's it's really important, but we have some self care strategies that might help you with that. And self care is personal, and I don't think we said that earlier, but it is. It's, yeah. it's personal. What my self-care plan or recipe may look like, it's different for, right. for Mike. So um, self-care is personal. So what I may have for my emotional pillar might be different from what Mike has for his emotional pillar. Exactly. The emotional strategies that we have here, crying. Yeah, it's that's not a misprint. That's not like an error or something you happen to see on your screen. Yeah. Yes, crying. There are some physiological advantages or benefits that we get from crying just to be able to alleviate the body of those negative toxins. But, and just the feeling that you have when you have a good cry, Mm -hmm. just the, the, that lifting of a weight that you, that proverbial weight that you feel that's lifted off of you after you finished a really good cry. Yeah. I I love a good cry. You know that. Um, I love a good cry. Um, we're going to go back into affirmations again with help with your you know emotional strategies mantras breathing exercises and i'm going to do one with you in just a second um therapy again yes and i you you might hear me say something about therapy every time every time it pops up on the screen mm-hmm. but for therapy don't feel like there has to be something quote unquote wrong with you to seek therapy like you don't have to wait until the bottoms is about is actually about to drop out. Like you're about to get ready to be like in a crisis type state to go get therapy. Right. Um, and then a support group, whatever that is, that's a support group virtually, a support group at yes. work. Um, get some people around you to, to be your support group, your people. Um, and that's super important. So let's just do a breathing exercise real quick. Right. Just sitting at the edge of your seat. Uh, I want you to close your eyes. So close your eyes. Thank you. Close your eyes. And we're going to do a lion breath. So I want you to slowly breathe in through your nose. I want you to hold it. And I want you to go out like a lion. So you're going to go. <sighs> like you have dragon breath. Like dragon breath. Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. Y'all, we recommend that you do not eat any onions or garlic before you try this exercise. <laughs> do it by yourself. But there's so many times, um, either at home or at work, and Mike always says you're breathing really hard. Um, <laughs> that, I, that I do, <laughs> told you that yeah. I do like my breathing exercise, especially when I feel myself getting anxious or upset or whatever. Taking that time to do breathing exercises is super important. So I hope that felt good. So keep doing that. It helps. Um, but think about some what are some strategies you can use for yourself, you know, for your emotional strategies, for the emotional pillar. Right. Um, just take time to do that. The next one. So spiritual. Mm-hmm. We want, always want to make sure we take the time to explain that we're not specifically talking about religion or a set of practices or beliefs. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the connection that you feel to a higher purpose or a higher calling. Yeah. And um, so 
definitely taking time to identify your higher purpose. And it takes time. So it's not like something that like right now, unless you just have done this before and thought about your why or your purpose, it might take some time to think about what is my full purpose? You know, what is my why? Yes. Um, what is the reason why I can get up every day? Right. Um, each and every day. And so it's not necessarily, again, want to reiterate that it's not necessarily like a religion, but it's definitely connecting or belonging to a higher purpose, um, a reason for every day, just getting up every day. Um, and so take time to identify your purpose. You know, what is your why? Right. Some of the spiritual strategies that you see listed before you can be things like listening to music. In this very day and age where there are so many different streaming platforms, mm -hmm. there is a song to go with every mood and feeling that we experience, right? Yes, yes. Especially uplifting music. Like, I love listening to uplifting music. Um, singing, practicing yoga. We both are yogis. We both practice yoga. And restorative yoga is a really, really um, yes. great type of yoga. Dance. Meditate. Um, take time to meditate and meditation is something that has to grow on you. So um, if it doesn't work the first time, keep trying. Um, yes. That's not a one shot deal. Like yeah. you have to practice almost makes perfect for real. You want to yeah. keep trying and doing. Exactly. Um, exploring nature, going outside, you know, yes. going outside, volunteering. Um, something with volunteering gives you this feel good, you know, uh, feeling inside that when you're volunteering it just to help someone else, it um, makes you feel good. And then, prayer um yeah. and so if you are a believer prayer um prayer does work okay those are all spiritual strategies the next pillar is so physical mm -hmm. we have the physical portion the physical pillar mm -hmm. and our, is that's really talking specifically about our body and how it functions mm -hmm. taking care of the needs of your body so physical self-care as we said before, it's different for each of us. What may work for me, what I may enjoy, my wife may not enjoy. Right. Like There's, going to the gym. Going to the gym. I, I don't mind going to the gym if I can go to a class. Um, but if I'm if I'm like going to lift weights, I have to have like a plan in place because right. I just end up wandering. <clears throat> but I mean, that's, that's a very good example of like self-care pillar, the physical self-care pillar where Mike is different where I am. Like I'll be doing more yoga or, you know, um, hit classes where he right. wants to go, you know, he'll also do hit, but also doing, you know, um, lifting weights and things like that. So and different cardio. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's just different and that's okay. And it's fine. You know, um, it's all individual. So the physical part. So here's some strategies um, that could also go along with um, the physical aspect, the physical pillar, eating healthy. Um, Exercising. Yeah. And eating healthy is not always a fun thing. I mean, you have to grow on it. But let me tell you all, spices and like getting different spices does help yeah. to eat healthy. It has to be all spices and herbs can yeah. definitely make all food taste good. Taste better. Um, you know, like he, Mike just said, exercise, practicing yoga, um, take a walk and, or run outdoors. Um, so if you notice, like the walking and nature can hit on multiple pillars at one time. So um, like the physical strategies could also help with some of the um, spiritual strategies and so on. So they, some of them can also blend together. Um, attend your yearly checkups, especially um, my sister is a nurse. So she always says this, you know, in the, even in the midst of COVID, um, there's been lots of people who just skip out on their yearly checkups. And that's actually not a good thing. We have, if your doctor's office is open um, and, you know, you're, they're practicing social distance and they're doing all the COVID protocols, make sure you're going to your yearly checkup. It's super important. And also taking time off. Mm -hmm. Taking time off of work. Yes. You, there is no medal at the end of the year for the person that has the most sick time left in the bank. Like, you're not going to get a medal for that. There's not going to be any type of reward that you get or a plaque that says, oh, uh, Mr. Creekmore, you got the most days left. So uh, we're going to give you this. It doesn't work like that. Those days are there. You've earned them. Right. Use them. Use them. If Use you them. need to take time off, take time <clears throat> off and get enough sleep. Um, for someone who struggles with sleeping like a whole eight hours, um, getting enough sleep. So doing some of the strategies with that is setting your phone aside. Um, one thing Michael told me, he's like, flip your phone over when you're sleeping. So you don't yes. see like it light up when text messages come through. Um, one of my other girlfriends said that she puts her phone to help with sleeping across the room. So it's not even next to her bed. 
I've not gotten there yet, but that's important. Like you put your phone across the room, um, that, that will help with that too. So getting enough sleep, going to bed early, trying to train your body to get enough sleep is, is important to self care as well. And I want to discuss something else that's not listed. Um, because I, I, I want to make sure that we're, we're all adults here. Mm -hmm. So whether it be you're in a marriage, committed relationship, mm -hmm. or a single, single educator. But we're saying physical, we know there are also physical needs. We're human. We're human beings. Mm -hmm. So we are aware that there are other physical human needs as well. We just hope that you exercise caution and safety in every instance. Exactly. Okay, let's, let's move on. Okay, personal. So number the fifth pillar is personal. So our interactions and relationship with others, including family, friends, coworkers. <clears throat> Um, human feed off of connections. Like we are, we, human beings just feed off of connections. We are just individuals that have to right. connect, need the connection. Um, and that's why right now a lot of people are struggling in the midst of the pandemic because the connections have been almost severed because of the pandemic, because we have the mask up, because we can't see family like we usually do. Um, Zoom is booming right now. I wish yes. I owned Zoom um, because Zoom is like on high right now. Zoom and FaceTime and all those things yeah. because it helps us to connect with others. Um, and the personal pillar is being in community with others. And so you, we have to get creative in how we interact with others, how we create community. Um, and here are some strategies. Some of the strategies include fostering friendships. The yeah. friendships that we've had before is more important now, so more than years past, yeah. to foster those friendships. There are lots of people right now going through a lot of things, and sometimes all I could take is a phone call from you to help them get through that tough time. So or, fostering friendships is, is extremely important. Or vice versa, right? And so like the, especially the friendships that you don't usually talk on the phone, you don't usually text, like you may have seen them at work, you may have seen them physically. Um, because that's not happening, we're going to have to take that extra step to foster those friendships in order to maintain that relationship, right? Um, create a vision board or plan. Um, as a family, we did that for New Year's, and that was really fun. Like We, we created a digital um, vision board. <laughs> yeah. And I'll, I'll be honest face. with you. He didn't think it was fun. I'll be honest with you. Um, a lot of men would not find that activity um, fun. I just be oh, let's not say you. male or female. Just I, no, well, I, I say that because there's not typically there's not like a lot of research with suggesting that men do like vision boards. And it's stuff. important. It is very important, mm -hmm. but that might not be our particular avenue. However, I say all that with this caveat. Um, for it being my first time doing that, I did see the power in doing the vision board. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, mainly because it allows you to put things out there that it, it almost kind of makes you think forward. Like you can't stay in the now and create a vision board. Like you have to be able to have the foresight to see what actually you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to, you know, what you're trying to make happen. Definitely. So it, it's it, it does have some power in that. So I say it. I said all that to say that it, it is um, it works. It does. And it helps you to create goals for yourself. So also with the vision board, it's, it's important to check in with that vision, you know, every month, like to look at the month and say, OK, what have I done so far to, to make sure that I'm um, that I'm doing things to foster my vision for the year? It's, uh, it's kind of a way to hold yourself accountable. Too, it is. It definitely sense. is. It definitely is. It's my first year doing a vision board. And so I, I'm excited um, to look at it on February 1st. Um, so choose a word of the year. Um, that's something that you can do, too, that you're going to, like, you know, hold on to. And that word is also goes into having a, um, a mantra. Right. Um, Spending time with family. Mm -hmm. And I put, we put Zoom there <clears throat> for a reason. Right. Because you may not be able to see family face to face. They may not be in your bubble. Um, so Zooming, FaceTime, writing letters. Let's go back to that. Like how amazing is it to like right. connect with a family member and write a letter, get a card um, and get back to that part of that got lost a little bit. Yes. And just to, to add a little bit more to the spending time with family. My wife and I, neither one of us have seen our family in over a year, our extended family, like our yeah. parents. Mm -hmm. um, so we are fully aware of the difficulties that a lot of us, a lot of you are experiencing because we're experiencing that as well. Exactly. Um, 
And it, it is very tough. And at times you feel like Zoom just is not enough. Mm -hmm. But we do have to grasp on to what we can actually use to still physically see our, our family. We might not be able to touch them, hug them or anything like that, but at least be able to physically see. So don't knock the power of Zoom. And it's in our realm of control. Like we can't control the fact right now that, um, well, we could control it, but we're choosing not to see our family right now to just keep them safe and keep us safe. Same thing. Right. Um, but in, the, in, the, in our realm of control, Zoom is what we can do, right? So just just realizing that there's some areas that you cannot control, um, release that and think about things that you can do um, that you can't control. Right. Um, setting goals for yourself. That goes kind of with the vision board. We're setting goals for yourself. Um, and something we did during um, during COVID-19 is we got a pet, which we said we've been wanting to get a pet for a while, but we didn't think we were ready as a family um, and getting a pet. So that was our, um, we should have named him COVID. No, we shouldn't have named no. COVID. I'm just joking. No. Um, no. We named him Hamilton. Um, but getting yes. a pet helps. I mean, I I didn't grow up with a lot of pets as a, as a child. So, um, I, I yeah, did. I know I you did. Yeah. Yes, he, he did. Pets are like family members, really and truly. I didn't believe that till I got a pet. Yeah. Um, so those are some things for personal, some personal strategies um, for you. The next one is, the last one is professional. Now, professional, when you're thinking professional, you're thinking about your level of satisfaction and compatibility with your job or with, with work. What is your current satisfaction level as it relates to your work? What changes can be made and how can you preserve you? Yeah, those are really deep questions right now, mm -hmm. um, professionally. But just sit in that, be real with yourself. You know, sometimes you can't um, come up with a plan or really take a next step in, in whatever you're going to do professionally or whatever until you can sit in your feelings about why you're feeling the way you feel um, and, and just owning that. So just like Mike said, you know, what is your current level of satisfaction? What changes can be made that are within your control? Um, and how can you preserve you in the process? And that's, um, those are three really big questions that you have to sit in and write out for yourself um, as far as your professional pillar. Right. And here are some strategies um, to help with that. Definitely advocating for yourself. No one can speak up for you better than you. Mm -hmm. So taking the time to, to use your voice to advocate for yourself. See, oftentimes educators will be the first ones on the front line to advocate for a student. But when it comes time to advocating for ourselves, we kind of like take a back seat in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. We have to be present on the front line advocating for ourselves, because if we don't, no one else is going to do it for us at times. And even if nothing comes of it, at least you can you can honor yourself and say, you know, I did speak up. I did advocate for myself um, in a respectful way. Um, set boundaries for your, for yourself. These are boundaries that I have. These are my boundaries um, and set them and, and stick to them. Never <laughs> underestimate the power of no. No is a complete sentence. Yes. Um, it's a complete sentence. Um, take a day. Um, and again, we said take a day with another pillar too. So pillars can, you know, you can have a self-care strategy that goes with different pillars. Right. And I want to jump back to saying no. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes the educators in the building that are approaching burnout are the ones who are a part of every committee, mm -hmm. every extracurricular mm -hmm. program or club. Mm -hmm. They are DTM. They are doing the most and, in the building. And, and and to their defense too, like sometimes it's an admin thing where, you know, administration keeps asking and you feel yes. like you can't say no. Yes. Um, yes. Where they feel like, you know, you just do such a great job at this. So I want you to be a part of this and this. And you just have to just, in a very tactful way, say no in a complete sentence. Um, and and you don't necessarily have to really say why. I just can't, no, I can't do I just that. can't do I can't, I'm not going to be able to I'm do not, that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that. Just, and the first time you say it, it's going to be kind of hard. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. That's going to be some awkward silence. It's going to be, it may even be some hurt feelings. Yeah. But at the end of the day, 
this is a professional strategy. No, it's a professional strategy. Yeah. Um, exactly. Take a day. Again, that goes with another one. Work doing your work hours. Um, all in eight, as my father would say. It. Yeah, all in eight. So you do what you can in eight. And for teachers, we struggle with that because we're like, oh, my gosh, like I have papers to grade. I have this to grade. Um, and I'm going to say this. And this is a little bit further down, but minimize to maximize. So s stop giving so much work where you have to grade it all. <laughs> yes. Find other ways to grade. This is the instructional coach coming out. You know, you can grade and, and assess students. Um, without it always being a, a 50 million worksheets, a 50 million worksheets, pencil and paper, minimize to maximize. Yes. OK, um, so take your breaks, minimize to maximize. Remember, quality over quantity. That is so important. Um, giving a lot of work and whether it's worksheets or whatever, a lot of work is not is not what's up. You need to think about quality over quantity always minimize to maximize. Um, and, and lastly, identifying. When, it's, when time. it's time, when it's time. And and that can mean a lot of different things that could be um, identifying when it's time for you to go to another grade level. Like maybe you're burnout of that grade level, mm -hmm. um, identifying what it's when it's time to maybe move different levels. Maybe I'm teaching when, elementary and I want a different view of middle or high school. Yeah. When it's time to maybe leave the school, transition to another transfer to another school, right. transfer to another school district. Right. And then lastly, when it's time to go ahead and take that last apple off the desk and say goodbye to your last student and clean your classroom for the very last time. Yeah. And, and there's a, there's a lot of teachers deciding that during this time. And that's why it's, this this session is so critical and so important because we want to retain teachers. We right. want teachers to stay in the profession and in order to keep and stay in the profession. You have to practice self-care. You have to take care of you and you have to find strategies that work for you um, in order to practice self-care. Um, because in any profession that you go into, self-care is going to be something that you're going to need to practice regardless of what you're doing. Right. Um, so um, and definitely I we want to leave you with this, this question as well. What do you do when none of your strategies work in your workplace? What's what's the recourse? What do you do? What's next? I want you to kind of reflect on that mm -hmm. because within that answer that you are able to find, that can then kind of help you identify where you're going with your own self-care recipe that you're trying to create. Exactly. Your next steps. Um, and so our next target area, our next target area is building your self-care recipe. And we were talking about at the beginning that you should have one for at home and one for at work, two different right. recipes. Um, and so basically we put the six pillars there, psychological, emotional, spiritual, physical, personal, and professional, and professional six pillars. And so um, of course at home, the professional wouldn't fall into that very much, but um, we want you to create a self-care recipe for yourself. We've given you lots of strategies for six of the pillars. Um, take a piece of paper, make a T-chart, have at home or at work, and just put a couple of strategies, one or two strategies for each pillar that you can that you can probably um, make a goal for yourself to right. do and make a goal for yourself to check out to check up um, to check on. Um, continue to identify the effectiveness of your recipes for home and at work. Um, and if you need to, sometimes you might need to change certain ingredients in your recipe. Yeah. There are, there are times where what, what once worked no longer works anymore. Yeah. And it can be for a multitude of reasons. Maybe you have gone from someone who was teaching in the classroom and now you're totally virtual at home. And now the idea of, you know, I'm going to stay at home just to relax and unwind has become overwhelming because you're constantly at home because home is your workspace now. Right. So that recipe, that, that special ingredient of being at home may need to be thrown out and replaced. So you have to constantly reevaluate mm -hmm. what ingredients you have in your own self-care recipe. And, and make it a smart <clears throat> goal for yourself. So make sure that it is manageable yeah, and simple, make sure that attainable, realistic, Right. And time specific. And time specific. You have to make sure that it is. And so 
um, don't put a whole bunch of things on your recipe if you're not ready for that, right? Pick things that where the pillars kind of mesh together, right? So for my yoga, my yoga is my spiritual um, pillar and, and my physical pillar. That's something I'm going to do for myself. And I try to get yoga in at least twice a week. If I get once a week, I'm like, go girl, because I'm still <laughs> like, yes, I'm still getting that um, that in. So don't be hard on yourself. This is not a homework recipe. This is your self-care recipe for you. Right. Um, so what's in your recipe? Take time to do that for yourself. This is our last part of our presentation. Um, but we've given you lots of things to marinate on um, yes. for your self-care recipe. Again, we don't want self-care to be a, a cliche. We don't want it to be something that you're just checking off the box, checking the box. It's deeper than that. OK, yes. and we don't want we want us to no longer do self-care or have self-care strategies or a recipe for survival. Yeah, this isn't crisis survival. This is I always tell people whenever I'm talking about self-care, you have to put it in place when times are normal, like when you're at your baseline level of functioning, mm -hmm. because once you hit that first bump in the road, usually that's the first thing to go out, go out the door, self-care. Yeah. So if you never had it in place before, it's extremely hard to establish it once you are in the throes of the school year. So we have to be very deliberate with our plans of self-care and we have to be intentional exactly. and consistent. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So take your time to build your self care recipe. Um, some of the you have access to these slides. So some of the um, questions that we ask take go, take time to go back and answer some of those questions that we have throughout the slides. Take time to think about your self care strategies that go along with the pillars. Truly appreciate your time, and thanks again to Pear Deck for inviting us on and being a part of this year's Pear Fair. Yes. If you guys have any questions, you can reach us right there at creekmoreconvos at gmail.com. You can reach us on Instagram at creekmoreconvos, and we both have personal Instagram accounts at Love Teach Bless. And I am bearded.school.counselor. Thank you for joining us. Take care and have a great rest of the year.